Prøv lige at spørge her, om man kan se noget derinde. Alt er fint, okay. Det er godt. Hello everybody, my name is Klaus Grotren and I'm the Managing Director of Prosapia. We're a recruiting company based in Denmark and we operate in Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Estonia and Switzerland. Today is about our home country, about Denmark, and we want to share some uh, answers to questions that we get regularly from you guys. Uh, when talking about positions and jobs and careers in Denmark. So um, before we get started, uh, a couple of practical remarks. At the bottom of, um, of uh, the screen, you can see there's a web address, prosapia.net forward slash relocation. That's where you can read uh, some more information and the links and the information that we provide in this session. You can have access to them uh, through our website. Okay, uh, before we get into the agenda and I present myself a little bit more, uh, let us uh, look at uh, how you can access this today. I assume that you're going to watch, most of you, this session from LinkedIn, which is where we announced it. Um, this is, uh, you know, you should have access to it now. And um, uh, if you have any questions, or remarks or anything that you want to touch upon, then please feel free to write comments in, in, the, in the field uh, below, below the uh, event. And also, uh, if you want to make a private comment or question, you can send it through uh, a message to Jesper Olsen and his uh, linked uh, in, uh, address is mentioned there as well. Um, also, we stream to uh, YouTube. We have a channel over there. If you go to YouTube, uh, you can search for Prosapia TV and there you will find the, the live event. Uh, that is, of course, if you want to remain uh, anonymous in this session uh, for whatever reason. Okay. Um, that's where you should find it there. And uh, that's uh, our specific address listed below the, the picture. Um, we will receive YouTube comments if you have any, any, of course. And last but not least, you can write an email to jesper.olsen at prosepi.net if you have any questions. Um, you can ask questions throughout the session if you like. Um, you can uh, uh, also uh, do it after I've presented uh, my uh, slides and uh, information. But in general, just feel free to ask. Uh, if I, for whatever reason, don't have time or uh, don't have the answer to your question, we'll make sure that it's available afterwards as well. Okay. So um, let's move on to uh, just a few words about me. Um, I am Danish. I started Prosapia in 2005. And before that, I had been uh, eight and a half years uh, with SAP locally in Denmark, but also in the Nordics 
in uh, EMEA Europe and in uh, the Americas globally. I was in, uh, in the edu educational division. Also, I personally uh, worked in four countries, three outside Denmark, one is Switzerland. I worked there prior to my SAP uh, time. Then I moved to Sweden and joined SAP in Denmark in 1996. So in total, I've been in the SAP space for 27 years. Uh, as headhunters, we deal with career development and so on. So we get a lot of questions about uh, how to advance your career. We advise clients on, on the SAP market and so on. Now, uh, through this period, uh, we have a lot of interactions. I've roughly estimated that I've had uh, about 12,400 uh, career talks and uh, job discussions through my uh, SAP uh, headhunting career. Of course, we interact a lot through LinkedIn, but also, of course, on the phone. Now, a little bit about our agenda. So um, the question is, uh, will the session be recorded? Yes, it will be recorded. You can see it uh, afterwards. Now, I want to touch upon the topics that I'm going to cover. First of all, the question is the big why. Why should you consider uh, Denmark as a worthy, uh, uh, worthy destination uh, for your career endeavors? So I'm going to touch upon that as some of the first uh, topics. Um, Denmark is a Nordic nation and we, uh, our brother and sister countries are close to us. Uh, and a lot of what I say will be uh, valid for those countries as well. But, you know, there are some fine details, of course. Also, I'm going to be touching upon what careers, um, what, what skills and trades are in demand in the market right now, meaning uh, what is uh what is uh what are the requirements in the marketplace so and that is of course what you can uh, hook into once you uh, might be interested in working in denmark and relocation so i'm going to touch upon that we are going to touch a little bit about uh, the financials the economical side so what are the salary levels um what are the costs of living and things of that nature so you can get a picture uh if you want to compare to your current uh residence uh, although I'm biased, I have a pro view that uh, Denmark is a great place to work. Um, I'm going to touch upon the, the pros and cons because we have to be realistic about, uh, you know, Denmark is not for everyone. It's for a lot of people, but it's not for everyone, of course. Then Q&A uh, at the end. And um, then I have a few closing uh, remarks. So that is the plan for this session. This will take about 20, 25 minutes more, and then we'll open for, for questions, okay? Uh, of course, in the end, if you would be kind enough to provide us with feedback, we'll greatly appreciate that. Now, uh, so why Denmark? Why consider this to begin with? And um, I think a good place to start will, would be looking at the so-called World Happiness Index. That is a joint uh, venture uh, report by Gallup, the uh, Opinion uh, Institute, by uh, Oxford uh, Research Center and uh, UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. That's a long word. But anyway, they go out and uh, poll the world in this regard. and. Uh, they have been publishing results uh, about this for roughly 10 years. And this is the current rank for 2023. Uh, you can see the um, that uh, number one is our brothers and sisters in Finland. They're doing very well. And next comes Denmark. Uh, that's where we are. Now, you can see that um, I have uh, indicated uh, green countries and I went into the uh, enrollment list last night and I saw that there were enrollments from uh, around 37 uh, different countries. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, so I thought I would include uh, the rank of, of your residence in this current one. Uh, now you may, of course, say, well, what do you consider when evaluating happiness or um, maybe the, abs, abs, uh, the absence of, of catastrophe would be another way to put it. Well, here it is. 
one of the there are certain uh, metrics and measures one is a gross um, uh, domestic product meaning uh, what is the total value of the production uh, per capita per uh, citizen if you will uh, then they consider social support uh, what kind of uh, social network and, and support system is available to citizens of that specific country. Also, another important measurement could be uh, the healthy uh, life expectancy. How long do people work uh, live in general? Obviously, uh, life is great, but it wouldn't be a lot without at least some freedom to make your own choices. That's another metric. Uh, corruption, unfortunately, plays a huge role in some countries uh, and uh, therefore they include it in this uh, index. And last but not least is the, the measurement of generosity, uh, you know, also a, a matter of social coherence, so to speak. But this is the current rank. Uh, congratulations to our brothers and sisters in Finland. Um, the, if, I, if I may say, uh, we have the better weather, if I may say. That's one thing. And also, I could make a joke about uh, our neighbors, um, that we have better neighbors, but that's another story. Okay, let's go on and see. So if you want to check this yourself, I've included the link for this, uh, for this data that I included here. Now, a little bit about Denmark, because this is the entry to, to the whole situation. It's a very politically stable country. We have a lot of uh, strong societal uh, structures, which means uh, it's a predictable society. Things work in general. There's a high level of trust, both between humans and between humans and institutions. Uh, that makes it easy to operate on a daily basis. Things get done in general. Of course, there are flaws here and there, but things get done in general. Also, uh, more from a prof professional perspective, there's an excellent work-life balance, meaning um, uh, in the professional life, you can expect to work more or less the uh, agreement hours, uh, of uh, which is in this case around 37, maybe a little more. And also, there's a strong family orientation. That's why the topic of work-life balance plays a lot of role, especially because there's a lot of uh, women uh, in, in, in the workplace. And for family logistic reasons, it's very important. So, and also, one of the things to be aware of, I'm going to touch upon that, is um, there's uh, a lot of things that are included in the tax. So although we pay a lot of tax and we do pay a lot of tax, we also get a lot for our money, both, uh, you know, uh, financed uh, healthcare system and uh, access to the educational system, including universities, for instance. So um, now um, taxation, as I say, we get value for for the tax for the for the payment that we we make. Also, uh, children care, um, kindergartens, and stuff like that. Okay, one thing to note, and I'll be touching upon that a little later as well. Um, if you relocate to Denmark, uh, you may be in a situation that one income isn't enough. Uh, because even though the salary is pretty good, so it's, uh, the, it's maxed by uh, high taxation as well. Anyways, so let's talk about the, um, the SAP market, uh, what the labor market looks like before we dive into what's, what skills and uh, competences are in demand right now. We went through the effort to make a map, if you will, uh, showing where are the SAP clients and SAP consulting companies that hire people like you? And by you, I assume you work with customizing your project managers, solution architects, uh, department ma managers, people that quote unquote live from the SAP ecosystem. And um, we have uh, in, in the bottle of this picture, you can see that there's a link where you can access that uh, particular map. It's free, you can use it as you want. Um, also, uh, this is used very uh, a, a lot by the users. There are approximately, by the way, before I say how many SAP consultants there are in Denmark, there are probably 165 Danish SAP clients, clients that bought the software from locally, 
We do not count in general roll-ins from uh, other countries where the system was set up in another country and then rolled into Denmark. We do not in general count them. But if those uh, daughter companies of subsidiaries have uh, SAP specialists or managers hired, then they might be on the list. But uh, in general, a rule of thumb about, if you take the 200 largest corporations in Denmark, about 45% of them, around uh, approximately 90, run SAP. Um, uh, that makes around 200 employees that would potentially hire you if you were to relocate to Denmark. Okay. Now, um, there are approximately, and this is an approximately guess, 6,600 uh, SAP specialists in Denmark. We know because we've counted them, more or less. And the interesting thing to know, and this is what plays into uh, your potential interest, there are um, there is a high average age in the marketplace. And that is due to the simple fact that the, the workforce in SAP is aging. And the current average, uh, based on an estimate uh, by twenty percent of the of the um, of the uh, total uh, number of SAP consultants, the, the average age is about fifty years old. Um, and what does that mean? That there are a lot older that exit the market, and there are actually too few younger that enter the market either through natural education or from uh, from uh, outside Denmark. So, and that of course is something that brings up an opportunity. If you're young and want to uh, relocate to Denmark, then you will actually stand a good chance. You know, usually you say the more experience, the better, but the market also needs um, uh, more people will uh, maybe a little less experience it, so you can have a nice mix in the picture of uh, in in a team both uh, from the diversity standpoint uh, age uh, gender all those kind of things okay now also all those 6500 uh, on danish soil on danish payroll if you will we also see, of course, that the, a lot of clients use the offshore or nearshore model, which means for everyone sitting in Denmark, there might be between three or five outside Denmark uh, working with uh, solutions and support and those kind of things. So, so it's just to say that you know it's more than six thousand five six hundred. Uh, we 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 didn't include the uh, people sitting abroad and working for Danish clients. Now. Um, one thing to also be aware that there's a very low level of unemployment. And um, it's almost to the point is technically, but if you get employed, you if you have good results, if you have good skills, you can usually get picked up again, if you will, by, um, by another employer. So we do not see people stay unemployed for a long time. That simply doesn't happen. Okay. Um, so in that regard, there's a high level of um, employment security. Um, a lot of Danish SAP clients and consulting companies are okay with uh, using English as business language. It's it's really prevalent here. Uh, uh, there are some clients where, uh, for you know, due to the nature of the business, they prefer to speak uh, in local language Danish, but. Um, that's just uh, one thing to to be aware of. Now, so a little bit, what's in demand? Let's talk about that. Uh, and this, of course, is a snapshot right now. It's a matter of um, it can change over time, but obviously, right now, what's driving the whole market is the conversion to S for Hana. That cannot be a huge surprise. Um, now. Uh, there's a lot of talk about whether you do it green field, brown field, blue field, or maybe I even heard the word rainbow field. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of ways to convert. A lot of clients are rushing to uh, meet the 2027 deadline. Some may reach it, some may not. But anyway, if you have experience from the more experience you have from projects, the more attractive you'll be in the Danish marketplace. Now, of course, that will be uh, true in your current uh, location, simply because uh, there's no different deadline for other countries than for Denmark. 
So, uh, but that's just uh, something that can may spike the interest of uh, an employer. Also, uh, in terms of role, if you have a long experience and are capable of juggling uh, solutions, uh, for either from an enterprise architecture or solution uh, standpoint, uh, and you can document that, uh, then your advisory uh, is uh, highly uh, welcome, both as internal as uh, external. Um, when I joined SAP 1996, um, uh, ABAP and ba basis was some of the areas where people say, well, well, it would be outsourced eventually. I don't see that at all. Because, for instance, if you see the, the classic SAP basis and you combine it with uh, innovative uh, environments like uh, AWS, like Azure and Google Cloud Platform, you do see that there's a lot of innovation going on and it takes a lot of skills to juggle these things around and make a viable solution. So uh, people that know SAP from the basis uh, perspective and also get to learn these hyperscalers or other uh, infrastructure as a service environments, they will be very well off. Uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there were a lot of um, clients that were SAP wall-to-wall -wall only. But now, it happens in Denmark as well as other places. Uh, it's much more uh, heterogeneous environments. SAP has to get integrated to lots of uh, systems and uh, public systems and uh, trading partners and all these kind of things. So integration plays a huge role also here that there's only about 160 of the 6,600 people, 160 are experts in SAP integration, whether it's PO or CPI. So uh, if you have integration skills, you should be welcome here. Uh, in the core SAP, also in huge demand uh, because uh, SAP clients may exchange an HR system from uh, the classic HR to workday or success factors, but the core finance and logistics usually remain the same. So um, it's just a matter of of thinking. Well, if you know the 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 core of SAP, and if I may add, if you can document or at least make likely that you are in the top twenty percent, you're good to go. Um, digital manufacturing is a topic that comes up more and more here. It's an SAP solution uh, integration uh, with the shop floor, especially. And uh, that is something that I see a rising demand in. It's a small area, but there's a rising demand. In general, um, does it make sense to go to Denmark with, with less than five years of SAP experience? Yes, it does in some cases. But the main rule of thumb is that um, you're much better off with six, uh, five years and above because um, you know uh, you have a, you can be productive relatively fast. So uh, I got asked uh, or get asked recently from uh, foreign uh, graduates or at least right out of university whether I can find or help them uh, in the Danish market. And in general, it's a hard sell because, you know, you don't bring a lot to the table, at least not now, uh, maybe later. SAP ABAP Cloud is also something that is in demand. Uh, development uh, in uh, an ABAP Cloud environment is uh, coming, uh, is a hot, hot topic. And of course, I had to mention AI because it's really starting to show in, um, show up at client side. Uh, clients are starting to, uh, uh, you know, to experiment and find what's going on, how they can utilize it to become more productive and uh, efficient and so on. So that is really, if you have SAP in combination with AI, we are really interested in talking to you. Then there's a tons of specialized areas, and I'm just mentioning a few here. ISU uh, Utilities is one of them. 
uh, FICA, contract accounting, a specialized area in, in financials, retail. Uh, and that's this is where I cannot list all the, the, the areas because some of them are really small. Some of them, there's maybe only 10 in Denmark that can cover it. And if you came along with your skills, you'll add 10% uh, to the market. So uh, if you uh, want to hear about uh, your skills on demand, please reach out to us. Okay, this is not a special priority list. I'm just listing the topics that uh, is a brain dump of what, what we, where we see a high demand right now. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about uh, compensation because after all, we are in here for, for the money, some of us, and some may uh, be for other reasons. But one thing to note is that SAP professionals in general are in the top three of uh, compensation in uh, the EU uh, area. Um, and I want to just provide, with, before I mention any numbers, I want to tell you a little bit about how the, uh, the structure of, of compensation package is. And there's, of course, the usual suspects. You, you have a monthly uh, fixed salary. You have um, the employer who pays a, a pension contribution. Um, this is your uh, money, but it gets managed typically by someone else. And it's yours. If you leave the, the country again, less taxes, of course. Nobody avoids taxes. Then you might decide to contrib contribute yourself to, or it's uh, mandatory in in the in the labor agreement between you uh, and the employer. There might be some variable bonus based on your performance or company performance and so on. That's also natural. And there may be, uh, uh, you know. Um, cars, uh, in extra in insurance, uh, benefits, and so on. Um, and I just provide three examples because there's no way we can cover all detail. But in general, for instance, if you're an internal SAP specialist, then you have your fixed monthly salary and, oh, sorry, <laughs> that was the other way. Then you have a pension between, typically that the employer pays between 8 and 12%. The average is 10 that means that's the money that's yours, but it's set aside for your pension and retirement. Now, some employers say that you have to take a certain percentage from your salary and pay. So, but it's still your money, uh, typically 5%, but it's not everyone that uh, uh, demands that. Another example is an SAP specialist with an external role in a consulting company. This is typical. You know, and and I there's no uh, I haven't uh, distinguished between the salary levels, but but uh, in general there's a little difference there. But uh, what we see is that for external roles there's a little lower pension, not for all, um, but then there's typically a variable part that's higher, and then you of course can decide what you want to do with that. Um, so and then in some cases there are some. Yeah, extra payment to your own contribution. That's your own uh, decision if you want to do that. So um, now, and the third part, and I, um, if, for instance, you're a um, in a leadership role, uh, either an architect or a manager or a director or whatever, you have more components. You may be, get a company car, but um, that is uh, subject to taxation uh, as well. So, um, but that was just a structure. Let's look at some numbers. And this, this is uh, uh, just broad numbers. 90% roughly of all SAP professionals in Denmark have a fixed monthly base salary between 37,500 uh, 37 Danish krona and 80,000. And that mounts to between 5 and 11,000 euros a month. And you can see the exchange rate I listed there. It's relatively stable. Uh, unlike a few other companies where they have a floating currency. Denmark, Denmark's currency is connected to the euro uh, with a, to an extremely high degree. So and let's look at some of the numbers, okay? Uh, if you're an SAP consultant internally with typically... Sorry, my Apple Watch wanted to uh, chip in with something. Uh, I triggered it, apparently. Sorry about that. But the ST consultant with five years of experience internally uh, usually can count on a 7,000 euros per month base pay. And then there's a 10% employment uh, pension on top of that. Okay. If you are an FICO architect with 15 years of experience, uh, you're usually around 9,000 euros 
plus some pension, and there could be a 10% target bonus. Now, bonus is not just uh, some flimsy stuff. That's actually uh, something that you can count on in the most cases, unless your employer is in, in deep trouble. Then you may not get it, but usually it's a part of the compensation, okay? And the last example is an SAP logistics solution architect, uh, 18 years of experience, uh, 18, no, sorry, 10,000 monthly base, base pay, 10% pension, some own uh, contribution to, and maybe a taxable company car, value of 900 euros per month. Now, obviously, uh, if you want to discuss your own salary situation, please let us know and we can, um, we can uh, give you some advice. Okay. Now, Salary is one thing, taxation is true, but we need to look a little bit at the cost of living. And um, there's a rule of thumb, <laughs> and I made the uh, shortcut here. If you look at the Big Mac index, um, that is an indication of costs of products around the world. Um, Denmark is in this place below Norway, Switzerland, uh, Sweden, and a few others. Now, let me make it clear that it's not a cheap place to live. And I know because I've compared it to other countries as well. Uh, you might come from a country with lower costs uh, of living, but uh, also lower salary. So that's something that you should be aware of. You should budget yourself uh, in order to find whether it makes sense to you. Also, I want to reiterate, you may need two incomes in your household if you want to make sure that you have a good living. It's not necessarily always, but you need to have a closer look at it, okay? Then there may be some variables, because if you bring a family from abroad and you want to bring them into uh, an international English-speaking school, well, then you might pay, have to pay uh, something yourself. And uh, the state will contribute, but you will also have to uh, bring it out of your own pocket as well. So that's something to consider. Uh, then there's relocation costs, of course. In some cases, not all, far from all, you can uh, you can maybe convince the employer to pick up that cost. And of course, it's a matter of standards, how we live. So uh, it's harder to get any closer to uh, the cost other than, um, than uh, take a closer look at it if you get interest in this. All right. And uh, this is a good news for you guys considering uh, uh, relocating to Denmark. There's actually a law that um, enables you to pay uh, a lot less tax so that you, quote unquote, only pay about 33% tax of your total income. Uh, it says here, tax scheme for researchers. That's because originally the scheme was targeted for uh, scientists, researchers, entering Denmark to help us develop our science and technology and other areas. But since the only criteria is the amount of money you earn, it also can apply for SAP consultants. Or if somebody wants to pay you for walking the dog and they're ready, ready to pay 10,000 euros a month, they can qualify for that scheme as well. But there's a lot of details in this and you, you must have lived outside Denmark for the last, uh, I think it's seven, uh, sorry, 10 years. And it can be applicable for seven years. So after that, you'll be back to quote unquote, normal Danish taxation. That's a benefit for you. You should read about it. And we are not tax advisors. Um, we urge you to, uh, to ask uh, professionals about such topics. Okay. Now, as I said, you may not qualify for a lower tax percentage. In general, you should earn more than 10,000 euros a month, 75,000 Danish kroner, okay? Now, just because you qualify may not mean that the employer is willing to engage on that basis. That remains to be discussed with the employer because it, it's, extra, uh, it's extra work and uh, administration. Um, so. Uh, it's not a guaranteed thing. And you need to read the fine print because there's a lot of things to be compliant with if you want to uh, leverage this uh, this type of uh, situation. Ask a professional advisor, whether it's a lawyer or tax advisor, or your accountant, whatever. Okay. Now, a few things here uh, that if you're interested in working in Denmark, 
uh, we urge you to do some homework. Of course, make your CV ready for international um, uh, usage. Uh, we will be happy to provide you feedback. We are not writing CVs for you, but we'll provide feedback if you're interested. And here's an important thing. It's pointless if you cannot articulate what you can do that's fantastic. You need to have a very clearly ident identifiable skill that is sellable, that is in demand of the market. That will incre increase your uh, chances of uh, and, 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 uh, and also opportunities greatly. Okay, how do you stand out? Okay, in which field are you in the top 20%? That's really important to know. Okay, the big why, because an employer will be interested in asking, so why would you want to relocate? Why do you need the colder weather and higher taxes in general? I mean, um, there's a lot of positive things to say. You can, your personal development, um, you know, a nice environment for family and everything, but you need to think about it and be able to articulate it, okay? Uh, one thing that I'd like to stress here, we strongly recommend you or actually demand you to have a family council because if you're taking your dependents your family with you you need to uh, be sure that they are on board uh, i can can't say it any shorter in any briefer okay because we're going to ask you are you sure that you're ready <laughs> because it has happened before in world history that somebody thought they were ready but weren't okay uh, I also urge you to study your home, new home country. It could be Denmark or anyone else, uh, especially the professional culture, because you may be accustomed to something uh, very special in your country, in your residence, but it may uh, it's surely potentially different here. Okay? Then ask us afterwards. All right. And again, we are not legal or tax advisors or relocation. Uh, we have an opinion, but you check it yourself. Okay? Now, I, there's a few sources that I'd like to uh, just mention here briefly. There's actually a book here, How to be Danish. Now, that does not mean that if you relocate to Denmark, you have to be Danish. That's not the point. It's a, pattern, it's a matter of uh, being able to understand how Danes think and how you can blend in uh, so you know what the social code is, of course. And there's another one, um, uh, The Xenophobes Guide to the Danes. Uh, frank and funny look at what makes the danish danes danish so that's another recommended thing uh very fun to read i enjoyed it very much you get a lot of uh decoding uh the the, the social infrastructure if you will okay and also there's some good podcasts out there i just included a couple of them here for your reference and of course uh, there's a rabbit hole of videos over on youtube that you can explore and you can get a lot of uh, valuable information Okay, now we are surely getting to an end, but uh, the pros and cons of being working here, uh, it's actually a top-notch destination, Denmark. I really recommend it, but it's not for everyone, obviously. Uh, the demand for SAP skills will be high for a long time because the aging population and too few new uh, enter the SAP market. Um, there's a, I, I estimate that between 17 and 20% of the SAP professionals in Denmark are actually from outside Denmark, okay? They, they come for, because they are maybe um, allocated by their consulting company, but they stay for the quality of life. If they are suddenly confronted with the fact that they have to relocate back to whatever country, some say, I got to stay. My family wants to stay. So. Just be prepared for that. You can grow your international network, obviously, um, and uh, get some experience working with other professional cultures. Uh, and of course, you learn to adapt to seasons and uh, various weather conditions, to put it mildly. But it's not for everyone. Uh, sometimes it can be a culture shock for some people. So you can do a, a little bit to, um, to prepare for that, okay? Uh, and as much as I would like to say that Danes are open and so on, it's a fact that, especially in a tr private field, we can appear a little bit closed and, and closed-minded, uh, and that can be sometimes be a struggle. I'll have to, I'll, I'll I'll concede to that, but um, there's ways to uh, to handle that. One thing surely to think about is what is your spouse going to do if he or she is not 
professionally active because um, everyone is working throughout the day. So it's a matter of, 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 of the social life as well. Um, and although you are in a different country growing your international network, network, then you won't be dealing with the one at home. So that's something to, I was abroad for 10 years and I didn't grow my home network uh, at that time. So that can be a disadvantage. Okay. And then there's that this damn weather. I'm sorry, but that's how, that's how it is. Generally we have a nice weather, but it's just four seasons. Okay. Now, if we have any questions, um, um, then, uh, I can take them, uh, now, um, if you have any, uh, in general, some, the question is, uh, what is the tax scheme? A again, if you, if you enter Denmark as, and become a normal, uh, employee, um, with a Danish corporation, then you get taxed as we do. And if you earn, for instance, 8,000 euros uh, a month, that is the monthly uh, fixed uh, gross salary, then you can count on probably probably 45% will be deducted from that. That's taxation. Uh, and then, of course, there's a pension and everything, right? But uh, as I said, if you qualify for, for the uh, experts or, or research uh, scheme, then uh, it will go down to 33%. So you, you, you will have more left in that regard. So it pays to uh, consider that at least. Money should not be the only reason why you want to relocate here, but certainly why not um, uh, consider it if you qualify for the uh, tax uh, the special scheme for researchers or experts, as we call them. So, um, again, uh, the session uh, will be recorded, uh, so you can uh, check it afterwards. So, um, I mean, uh, obviously, a lot of the questions that I see you have are, are very much, and we are surely running out of time, but uh, somewhat personal, and we'll be happy to answer them if you have any questions. Um, and for that reason, I'm going to forward to the next thing, my closing remarks. Um, uh, I didn't, um, okay, uh, I have another question that I'll ask in a second. Okay, but uh, if you look at what, I, I, we chose not to talk about the jobs today because there are a lot of jobs that we don't announce publicly where we work on behalf of a client. Uh, so if you have the feeling that your skill is in demand, reach out to us and have a discussion. We know who could potentially be your employer. Maybe we can help you in that regard. Okay, that was the question. Um, if you find the right company match, how long does it take before a candidate is in Denmark? Well, um, uh, I would say uh, we're actually just in the process of relocating two people from Stockholm to uh, to a part of Denmark uh, right now. And, you know, from the time of entering an employment agreement to the time where you're usually here, you, it can be between two to four months, depending on your individual situation. Because uh, usually the, the, the bigger joker is, how long is your time to terminate your current uh, activities if you have an, a current employer? That is something to be aware of. But in general, you can usually people join uh, employers uh, on the 1st or on the 15th of the month, but it can be any time really, okay? What about the demand for ABAP developers who are junior mid-level uh, specialists? Yeah. Um, especially ABAP. <laughs> uh, if you are in the younger generation, and by younger, I say, uh, well, actually <laughs> less than the average. <laughs> if you're younger than 50 years, but especially in the 20s and 30s, you should have a good uh, standard good chance because there'll be a bunch of old guys and girls that um, that are really the current uh, staff. So you you could mix in uh, and, and, and increase the diversity of a team. So uh, if you know ABAP and if you have close to five years of experience, or at least, yeah, at least more than half of that, uh, we would like to talk to you, okay? What's, oh yeah, that's a good point. What's the typical allowance of vacation days in Denmark? 
um, uh, it's so that most people in the industry and in consultant have around 30 days. It's divided between five years of vacation and five extra days. In some industries, especially in the financial world, and if you become, if you get older, you get more. In the financial industry, it's eight, eight weeks. But in general, my rule of thumb, six weeks of uh, vacation or off time. And um, if uh, some, some employers will let you accrue, accumulate your overtime, and then you can compensate uh, or you can arrange something uh, uh, in that uh, regard. Okay. Success factors, uh, consultants. In general, um, there's a, um, a decent demand, uh, although we haven't been asked uh, re recently, but in general, uh, if you have, it really depends on your specific uh, success factors module. Uh, we'll have to, I, I, we can answer that one-on-one uh, -on -one if you care. Uh, that would be a, a good one. Um, the question for PIPO, as I said uh, earlier, integration people are among the most requested, demanded skills set in Denmark. There's only about 160 on Danish soil. And uh, if you know PIPO and you have above five years of experience, chances are uh, that you can land a, a nice job here uh, for sure. That That is one of the uh for sure areas if areas if you if you will okay um again here's the link where you can uh, check the links that i provided we have followers on linkedin i made make tons of content and videos uh about the market about being an sp consultant about your career development and so on um you can, if you uh, want to, our, my colleague Jesper Olsen is open to assist you with a, we call it career check, approximately 30 minutes on the phone or, or Teams, where you get your individual assessment about, okay, where do you stand? What are your chances if you want to uh, come to, to Denmark and, and land a, a great role? What are your chances? What should you do? We can provide you feedback in that regard. That's, here's Jesper. He's also, of course, on, on LinkedIn. Um, there's a question here. Um, the last one, I'm just chipping in here. Any salary range for SAP master data in the supply and SAP ECC6? I mean, in general, it's um, we see master data um, requirements from the market growing. There's a growing understanding of the value of master data. Otherwise, you cannot do uh, advanced AI and data science stuff on top. So I see that there's a rising demand. Uh, I would like to as, understand you, uh, whoever asked, ask us, I'll provide you with some specific feedback. Demand for rice? Yes, rice is on the rise, <laughs> literally. So uh, it's a matter of understanding that if you bring rice to the table, and, and especially, of course, project experience and maybe some, some, uh, some uh, operations, you are in good shape. Definitely. So especially if you have the architectural viewpoint, how it fits all together, that would be a, a, a great uh, thing to add to the Danish marketplace. Okay. Okay. We are actually a little above. So um, I've been talking a lot. I want to thank you for participating. We appreciate it. Um, and we are so happy to receive any feedback, what we can improve, what topics we could cover in the future. Just uh, reach out and um, let's discuss your options if you want to go to Denmark. All right. That's a, that's a wrap. See you out there.